Hello and welcome back to another episode of From the Ground Up. I'm Bianca Miller-Cole and today we are going to be talking about Amazon. Now, as you all know, Amazon is a very large marketplace. It is one of the most probably dynamic marketplaces out there and of course is a great opportunity for you to further your brand ambitions with a new audience. I know some people feel some kind of way about Amazon and and how they're taking over but look, let's be honest, people use Amazon on a regular basis and therefore it makes sense that you think about how your brand is going to be found by customers of Amazon. Now, I'm very clear that I have uh, customers and potential customers who will come directly to the website, who will want to support the brand directly. They would want to ensure that you're not having to pay any additional commissions and fees. People who are very conscious about spending directly with a small business. And that is fantastic. Thank you so much. Great. But I also know that there are customers who maybe have an Amazon Prime account or are going to be ordering other things, and they want to make their life easy. And I want to make life easy for them to be able to buy from me. But Amazon is a massive, massive platform. And I think, or at least I know, that sometimes you can just list and hope for the best, and it doesn't work, okay? And I know this from personal experience, so I'll be honest with you. And I said to you, this whole series is about honesty and so on, so let's be honest. I know that when um, a member of my team was leaving, it was kind of my main member of my team who used to manage all the logistics and so on, and I said, okay, well, you're leaving. That means you can't do all the posting to the customers and the handwritten messages and all that good stuff. So therefore, let's send all that stock to Amazon. Let's list it on Amazon and let them do the fulfillment for us. And that's what we did. Now, it meant that we had uh, orders coming in here and there and so on, but we didn't list to the best of our abilities. He is not an Amazon expert. I was really busy at the time. I didn't have time to really look at the search engine optimization side of Amazon or making sure we listed with the right keywords or making sure that we were thinking about how we were listing and how it appeared to the customer. We did what we could or he did what he could within that period of time. But now as I've reflected on it and I've looked at the listing, it's just not good enough. It just says the brand, it just says what we do, but it hasn't got the keywords and keywords are really important. It doesn't have what I now know is called A plus content. It doesn't have that stuff. And so it was ticking along, but it wasn't doing dramatic uh, sell through. It was really helpful though, because my website connected to the Amazon FBA and it meant anyone ordering from the website was also fulfilled by Amazon. Fantastic. Great. Now, you'll know that now we've decided to change to having a fulfillment center do our fulfillment. And so the majority of our stock will be hosted by that fulfillment center. But by speaking to my Fiverr expert, Johnny, we have come up with a plan. Now, I think this is important. As you grow in business, you identify ways that you can change or improve and you look at how you can structure your business for success. Now, you all know that I have a metric that I'm working towards to ensure that this business is a success in my eyes and therefore I need to make sure I essentially 10x the whole experience. So when I spoke to Johnny, we spoke about doing a few things. Now, the first thing was the shop, the store right? So previously, I didn't even have a store. I just had a listing. So when I spoke to Johnny, he explained to me the importance of having a store. And that store, of course, is is the is the shop window. It is where sometimes people will go to see your other products, to see what else you do, your other solutions. But it's also a way to communicate with your customers, much like having a website. You want to have that store. And the store communicates all of the things that you sell, what you do, how you do it. And so it's really important that you have that store created. So I've worked with Johnny and Heather and his team in creating a store that has all of the right information on there. Now, when I talk about A plus content, essentially what I'm saying to you is you want to make sure that you have the copy written really well. The copy is important from a search engine optimization perspective. So i.e., Have you got the keywords that customers will type into Amazon so that you come up? That's what that means, right? So making sure you have the right copy that resonates with the customer, that has the keywords that will come up in the search. But also, have you got the pictures and imagery and maybe video that is the A-plus content that will make sure that people look at the profile, look at the store, and they're like, okay, yeah, 
yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's for me. And that means having images that actually has some great context on there. You know, it says, okay, this serum does this, this, and this. This serum contains that, that, and that. Like really clear illustration of what the serum does or what the wash does and so on. And that A plus content is going to help your whole brand to shine. So I've been working with Johnny and the team to create the store, but also to create individual listings for the brand so that it showcases exactly what the brand does. So it shows each product individually, but it also shows the store with all the products together. So what I would say to you is if you're thinking about exploring that step into Amazon, you need to be thinking about how you create a storefront that represents your brand, but also how you list those individual products to make sure that your customer knows what to choose, how to choose it, and how often if they wish to subscribe and all of that good stuff. Now, you may be wondering, should you go down the FBA or the FBM route? So I spoke to Johnny about this in more detail. So FBA is essentially when it is fulfilled by Amazon, FBA, fulfilled by Amazon, right? Now, Amazon, of course, have a preference to your brand, apparently, if you fulfill with them. So they will push your brand more if you have FBA, okay? Good reason then to fulfill your stock with Amazon. But equally, as you know, I want to have control over my data. So I don't want my website to be fulfilled through Amazon because then I don't know my customers. I can't email them. I can't get reviews from them directly. I can't have that correspondence and build that relationship. So it's fine if a proportion of my customers go through FBA and therefore I don't know who they are, but Amazon does its work in kind of encouraging repeat custom and so on. But of course, I want to have FBM, which is, of course, when it's fulfilled by an external provider, um, where I will have access to that data. I'll be able to see who my customers are. I'll be able to touch base with them. I'll be able to use email automation on them and so on. Right. I'll be able to really create that great dynamic customer relationship, which is what I want for myself and my customers. So I've chosen to uh, when speaking to Johnny, he said to me, Essentially, what we want to do is we want to create um, some early reviews. So we probably want to do Vine. Vine is basically a way of giving away free product to some Amazon people who are listed as Vine um, and they get to review the product. So that gives you those early reviews. In order to do Vine, you have to be on FBA. So that's why I have to have some stock sitting with Amazon. But what we've chosen to do is have stock sitting with Amazon, a small inventory. And then if that sells out, then FBM kicks in. So we'll never be sold out. We'll still have that as backup. And of course, it means that we're creating a foundation with Amazon, but we're also ensuring that our customers can always get their products when they want to. And that gives us both. So that's the kind of development of Amazon. The next step, of course, is Amazon PPC, so pay-per-click. So this is when you decide to spend some money on advertising. Now, previously I said I'd, we'd created some kind of average uh, listings. We hadn't spent any money on advertising and so on. So in speaking with Johnny, we talked about creating a budget that would allow us to do some advertising to give the brand a push to make sure that customers are aware of the brand and so on. Now, this can be a very important part of your marketing plan, but also you need to factor that into your marketing budget. So how much can you afford to spend in order to push the brand on Amazon and get it out to more customers? Remember, this is getting it out to an audience that you may not have been able to tap into before. So it's a great way to think about how you utilize marketing spend. But there's lots of ways you can spend money on marketing. Of course, there's the Instagrams and Facebooks, there's Amazon, there's Google ads. And we'll probably cover, cover all of those along this journey. But I wanted to test what it is like to spend some money on Amazon PPC. So I've spoken to Johnny about creating a budget for that. Now, regardless of where you are in the budgeting stakes, the information I've received from Johnny is essentially that you should expect that you'll probably make 30% more than the money you spend. Does that make sense? So for example, if you spend uh, £10,000 on advertising, you'll get back about 13000 So that means, you know, you're making a £3,000 profit. Assuming you have enough profit margin within your product, 
then of course that's going to work out okay for you. It's not fantastic, but it's okay. But what that does and what the hope is, is that once that first customer, that first cohort have bought the products because of the advertising, they then love the products, they will then buy again. You're not paying for that advertising a second time. So you're always thinking about it as part of your marketing budget to bring in a new customer. But then, of course, over time, you're hoping that you are working on retaining that customer, getting that customer feedback, generating more interest, hoping that customer refers others and so on, and the other parts of the marketing chain kick in. So that is how Amazon works. So that is an Amazon overview. It's been really interesting working with Johnny and working with Heather, who are my Fiverr experts, because they have been able to really push the brand and really look at the branding and make sure that it stands out, make sure that that content is A+, and make sure that copy is going to do its work for us, as well as, of course, setting up that PPC campaign. So I will update you in due course on how that campaign does and how we are, um, how the metrics are for success I will let you know once that campaign goes live and of course when the brand goes live so let me leave you with a few tips let me leave you with a few suggestions for what you could be doing as your homework as you follow along this journey from the ground up so the first thing is of course if you need that help with Amazon and unless you're an Amazon expert yourself, I'm going to say you probably do, you'll want to go over to Fiverr and find your chosen Amazon expert who can help you. Now, I spoke to a few different people before choosing Johnny, so make sure you do the same work. Speak to a few different people, see what they can do, and of course, understand what is your budget for getting someone to assist you with building your platform on Amazon. The second one, how many products do you want to list on Amazon? Now, it's important you think about the products you want to list and what you want to push and how you want to create your store. Now, bear in mind, of course, that you need to make sure that there is enough margin in your retail price for you to be able to give that 30% commission to Amazon every time they sell one of your products. And what you can't do, or at least what it's not suggested that you do, is that you increase the product price on Amazon to enable you to balance out that cost. You need to make sure it's built in. So look at what your costs are, look at the products you want to put onto Amazon and start factoring that in. The third thing would be to create a budget. Now, you might want to think about your marketing budget as a whole. Where would you like to apportion budget? And then thinking, where do I spend my budget? Is it with Amazon or am I choosing to spend it elsewhere? And if you have one set budget, well, what percentage of that budget could you dedicate to Amazon and what percentage would you dedicate to other platforms? And it's important you think about how you decide to spend that budget and how you allocate it. So I hope that helps. This has been another episode of From the Ground Up brought to you in association with Fiverr. I hope you are enjoying this journey and my journey to building my brand new brand, High End Skin, which has been fantastic. I will see you next time. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>